All right, we're closing above 4,000 for the first time in 2023. Is this a signifier of something? Is it important to look at? And are we destined for a bull market? Well, the market would argue that we're getting a soft landing. The Fed is gonna have to cut rates as they're currently pricing. And therefore, the bottom is in. The worst has probably been seen. And I understand that case. I hear that case a lot. It seems that there have been many market participants who believe that case all of last year. And there's certainly market participants who believe it this year. And there's certainly price action today suggesting that there's some level of underexposure. However, let's block out all the noise for a second. Take a look at what we are and t where we are and take a look at the fundamentals. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is just above 6% off its all-time high. Um, and that all-time high included growth rates that were tremendously high, inflation that was working in the benefit of companies, money supply that was growing tremendously, low interest rates, and ultimately a completely different environment than we're experiencing today. Today we're experiencing higher interest rates a uh, higher long-term interest rate projection by the Fed. I'm not talking about the rate hiking cycle we're experiencing now. They put in the SCP 23, 24, 25, and then they have a long-term projection. That long-term projection is higher, a lot higher than we experienced when the Dow was at its all-time high, when the S&P was at its all-time high, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, Basically, every single metric that matters is low, and there's more to come on this downside thing. Let's not forget, the tightening isn't over. Additionally, the effects of the tightening aren't over. Waller said last week that the policy lags are shorter than they used to be um, because the market can react to the Fed's guidance, but that the tightening has yet to be seen. The full effects of the tightening have yet to be seen. So let's kind of broaden the scope here a little bit. The Fed is willing to and comfortable comfortable with, willing to see and comfortable with an economic contraction. Waller said as much, if we had a light recession, that would be considered a good outcome. The market is expecting a recession and therefore rate cuts. But the Fed is also okay with the recession. And if they're acknowledging that they're okay with the recession, why would they cut rates? That's already something that they've acknowledged is okay. So they would only cut rates if it's an outcome they're not okay with. So as far as I'm aware, you know, pullback recession, the rates are gonna do and the Fed is gonna do exactly what it's saying, which is holding rates high, throughout all of 2023 and well into 2024. And I mean, they're going as simply as far to say, like Kashkari, that they're playing a game of chicken with Wall Street, or Wall Street's playing a game of chicken with them, and Wall Street's gonna lose and the Fed's gonna win. So these are the people who literally have their hands on the levers of the actual decisions, and we're just here speculating. You know, there's a time and place for speculating, but it's not when you're trying to fight the Fed and they've said they're comfortable with the recession. They've even quantified this. They project unemployment to get to 4.5%. Obviously they're comfortable with that if they're projecting it and they're also projecting rates higher until 2024. I mean, the fighting the Fed talk, it really is, in my opinion, speculation that is not based in reality. I mean, it's just like ignoring the Fed. They're choosing to ignore the Fed. Their logic is the Fed got it wrong last time, so therefore they're gonna get it wrong again here. Whether or not they get it right or wrong is basically irrelevant. What matters is what they do. And they're giving themselves the slack to see a recession and they're gonna be okay with that. So the market has recouped a lot of the losses here. It's very, not that far from the all time highs, realistically, particularly the Dow. The NASDAQ still a decent way. The S&P, you know, like this is like middle of 2021 or so territory. I mean, it's not that far. That was the market, like I said at the beginning, with a tremendously different environment. 
We don't want those prices. We do not want those prices. Those prices were highly inflated, ridiculously expensive, all these things. We had cryptomania. It was not a truly good environment. We need an environment where there are actual honest investments to make where shareholders get a good return and actually get a good deal. We're not getting good deals right now. There, there are some, but there are very few and there'll be way even less and the deals overall will just be worse if the market continues to rally. There were kind of some deals at the lows, but not that many, definitely not in the biggest companies, unfortunately. You know, Microsoft is definitely doing some interesting things. Their earnings will probably hold up better than the rest of mega cap tech. We're getting those tomorrow. You know, they obviously want to front run everybody else. But I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not comfortable buying in this market. I'm actually much more comfortable shorting this market because for the first time in over a decade, for the first time in over a decade, we're going to see earnings contract and the market's not ready for that. That pricing environment with boom, 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 all those characteristics, low interest rates, growing money supply, et cetera, et cetera, low yields that, you know, a, the, the whole thing with like Apple, Amazon, Google, et cetera, Microsoft, yields, treasury yields were so low that those companies were viewed as an alternative to treasury yields. That is no longer the case, thankfully, because they're not the same thing, but they were considered that. And that led to a big reach above historical earnings multiples. At the end of the day, we are buying a right to cash flows and we have to stick to that understanding. We're not buying this thing that we can sell at a higher price. And I fear that's the mindset that is prevailing right now on days like today, when there's a grasp to get things, to buy it and then sell it at a higher price. Let's go. You know, I don't think the people buying today are looking at the multiples and say, oh yeah, I should buy Apple roughly 50% plus above its normal historical multiple. I don't think the people buying today are saying that. I think they're just buying because they think they can sell 190. That doesn't make sense, okay? You gotta buy a cheap thing like PBF. We talked about our reasons for PBF. PBF, we, I bought that at 50, it went to 35. I bought more, I didn't give a single damn. I just chilled, I was chilling with that. A stock that I'm buying to sell purely at a higher price that I'm not even caring about the earnings, I'm gonna feel that and feel uncomfortable when that stock falls. I'm not gonna think, let me just pick up some more. These people haven't done their homework, right? That's not, that's not the thinking, it's, it's, a different, it's a different whole paradigm. And the paradigm that works in the long run and that is actually important is the trade of cash now for earning stream over time. And right now, it's just it's not happening on a day like today. It's just not it's too, too much. Especially, you know, yes, okay, maybe it would make a little more sense if the money supply were growing tremendously. If there was another bazooka, historic expansion of the Fed balance sheet. Maybe if that was happening, yeah, you wouldn't want cash. You would just want to go all in on stocks because the money supply was growing. Well, the balance sheet is shrinking and the Fed's not printing more money. So I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. You know, what I'm, what I'm going to tell you is if you have the same thing JP Morgan is saying right now. If you have gains, this is a good time to wham them into the market ring the register and take some risk off the table because at some point the part, the short term part we've seen this before i mean this is like this is no big deal we've seen this the whole bear market rally the whole time there've been there've been there's been stuff like this going on this is not a new environment there's no reason to think oh we're in a bear market all of a sudden we've seen this before the market is we what we haven't seen is such a mismatch between the market and the fed so we're going to see what happens Today's an interesting day. We saw it kind of pull back towards the end of the day. It didn't even last the whole day, the same mania. We didn't close with the highs. We'll see what happens, you know? We're not worried about a day. Let's be patient, see what happens day to, week to week, day to day. 
Next week is, is a bigger week than this week with the Fed with more big earnings. But we have some earnings this week, so we'll start getting a taste of that tomorrow. So that's today's video. We'll see what happens. And until next time, peace out.